So hello everybody, a warm welcome on a Tuesday morning. So this is the sixth session as part of the uh, eGov quarterly training. And uh, today's session is focused on digit configuration and customization. Uh, this is handled by Pradeep, one of the senior most folks in our digit implementation team. So uh, the topics that Pradeep will be uh, focusing on for today are customization and configuration. So yes, I hope you guys enjoy the session as you've enjoyed the previous five as well. So over to you, uh, Pradeep. And yes, let me know when you want me to flash the poll uh, questions as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Anishu. Thank you. morning everyone yeah Uh, Abhishek Menno, uh, overall uh, participated today, and brief introduction like, see, what are the, uh, any existing partners are also present here, or uh, they are all our new partners? Today, fortunately for us, it's a mix between existing partners and uh, new partners as well. Okay. And uh, if you look at the profiles as well, uh, we have a bunch from technology and BA as well. So it's it's going to be a mixed crowd for us uh, today, Pradeep. Okay. So why I ask is because uh, so I'm going to mix both technologies plus so some set of configuration. I'm going to share my experience of the implementation, what we did on Digit with uh, which we are supporting actually currently. Okay. okay. So that's the reason. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pradeep. Perfect. So, so good morning, everyone. So uh, myself, Pradeep Kumar. Uh, so I'm a technical manager in this organization. So as you know, uh, you guys are aware that Digit is a, it's a platform we are uh, running in multiple states now, actually. From Igor's side, we are currently implementing in two major uh, states. One is Uttarakhand and another one is Punjab, actually. And we also uh, gone live in other states with the help of the partners, actually. Like Odisha, they are using with the help of PwC. And we are going with NIC for Northeastern states. So around uh, uh, we have building plan approach system that we are going live with uh, in the northeastern state with the help of the other partners. Similarly, we are working on uh, Koi code. We are working with other partners also. So digit, if you consider that okay, this is a uh, it's a it's a one of the the high good platform which is uh, present in the urban actually currently which uh, supports uh, many of the municipal uh, re related uh, services actually. So we'll discuss further in about this actually. Uh, if I, I want to first, what I plan is first, I'll explain you guys about the brief about the digit actually, the architects, how to, what are the different versions we have, how to set up this and locally, how uh, digit code we need to maintain actually, if I'm going to implement for a new state actually. So what are the steps we need to follow? Those briefly we'll introduce first. And then second, in the second portion, I'm going to explain more about how uh, customizations we need to do, what are the configurations we need to use for the digit configuration actually. That we'll discuss in this two hour session actually. So uh, come to the beginning, actually, we uh, we have a document called digit.org. Uh, this is the uh, documentation part uh, of the entire digit is uh, defined here, actually. So this section, so you will get all the uh, details of our uh, product information, our the health related to DevOps, all the things each service-wise information are documented in this 
uh, website actually. So, so, so this digit, uh, it's a, as you guys are aware, it is, it's an open source. And uh, in, in this platform, we are uh, used on the open source tools only. They are software actually. And then it is mobile enabled and it is most mobile friendly plus web based, both it supports actually. There are, uh, if you go with the architecture actually, what uh, Digit is defined is, it is it's a microservice architecture being used here. So each individual services, we are divided into smaller uh, minor services so that it's easy for us to integrate with the other services. That's how we, it's designed actually. Okay, so, so some of the major technologies what we are using here is, uh, we are using uh, Spring Boot applications here on the microservices. A second, uh, Pradeep, I guess yeah. the participants were requesting if you could be a little louder or maybe uh, check on the mic. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's yeah, clear? It's much better, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one minute. Okay. So, uh, Digit is one of the uh, it's an open source platform. As I said, it is a Microsoft based, based platform. So, we made it so. Um, it's a what we did is a we divided into multiple microservices and each one is uh, we using spring boot applications actually we what we are doing is each service is it's in uh, we containerize it's in the docker images and we are orchestrated in the kubernetes cluster and uh, the front end what we are using is the react framework actually and uh, in the back end uh, it's pure java and uh, uh, databases we are using postgres database so these are all, uh, as you're seeing, all these things are open sources. Even we are using Zool API gateways actually. As a messaging services, we use Kafka service actually. Kafka for messaging queues, everything we are maintaining Kafka. And uh, internally we are using Elasticsearch, we are using Kibana and uh, we are, and uh, Ingress, Nginx, we are using to route the traffic actually. So these are the overview of the, uh, digit internally what are the technologies users actually when when we come inside actually what we are doing is most of them these are all rest api uh, so we divide it into three parts actually one is there's a core services where we have we call it as a infra services actually this is a core service where we have all the different type of services like uh, we have the file store user services localization service we'll go in more detail about it workflow engines, these kind of things are in the code. When you come to uh, business service, uh, we have a demand collection, all these kind of things. Example, these are all common actually. When you are collecting any demand you are raising, it may be from the property tax, it may be from water collection, it may be from trade license. All these are managed in a centralized system as a demand service, which is present in the business service. Similarly, when you're doing any collection, the collection mode may be anything. It may be uh, you are collecting through online, offline, maybe in DD formats, check any format. These are all, all these things are managed and maintained in the collection service actually. So, so we divided the entire uh, workflow into a smaller services as you looking here. So entire HRM is like uh, all the employee management, all these things we are managing using the employment service. So you can see here, asset service, inventory service, we divided into smaller parts actually, and we grouped it under business services. Uh, and there are other things like we have a municipal services. The municipal services uh, we call, because all the property tax, all these things, we call it as a separate municipal services. And we manage it in the different rest area. So they are all communicating each other uh, and uh, so one or two flow is each service is communicating with each other using, we have a Kafka topics we are using. And the data is also pushing to the uh, database in this approach actually. 
So there are, uh, we, we documented all these things here, like how it is useful actually. When we are using, uh, we are internally using persister and indexer services also. This week, uh, uh, what it will do is, uh, when you, I want to persist anything into database, we have a separate problem, persister service. Similarly, indexer is a service which is used for pushing data to the Elasticsearch. And um, so this is uh, some of the things actually, the technical stack wise, we, uh, it's explained here. So as an end user, it is a uh, whoever is knows the Java Spring Boot and uh, uh, this basic uh, React framework uh, is a added advantage to maintain the software actually. Come to the uh, next topic is, uh, we'll see what happens when I want to take the code actually. Say what are the different versions of uh, uh, digit uh, things are there. So we have, if you open this docs.digit.org and the upfront you will get a different versions list here. So we are currently in the 2.6 actually. We started with uh, 2.0, but current version of digit you will get here actually. For example, when you click on the digit 2.6, uh, in the release note, it will give more details actually. So what are the contents or changes happened in digit 2.6? And what are the features we added in this version actually? So there are the clients, uh, we are, they are in the different versions actually, as I said here, you can see different versions. Uh, the current version we released uh, recently is digit 2.6 and we are giving more details here, like what are the changes we added and what are the enhancements are added actually in each uh, feature wise actually, or you call it as a different services. And uh, the entire documentation is also we provided what we modified in these uh, services. And if you go in further details, it also gives what are the configurations you need to do. Example, if you, if you want to release this, actually, we also mentioning what are the changes required in the MDMS. I'll come to the, I'll explain what is MDMS. And what are the bugs we fix in individual, uh, uh, this OBPS is a service actually, it's a common service, BP administration service, everything. Similarly, what are the configurations changes? What are the infra level changes? So all these details, like what are the builds you're supposed to use? Uh, we have just tagged a different version that also is available here actually. Okay, this is, this is the release notes. Uh, so you'll get more details actually. Uh, also as a part of the release, we are publishing all the test cases. We are publishing the, uh, what are the, if it's a major release, we are highlighting what are the additional things we added in individual services. So all this information is available. So the same logic is available for different versions. If you select 2.5, it will give the 2.5 related changes also. So what are the features we released in 2.5? So, so this is where you, we can upgrade our the versions from one version to the other version. So this is the release history and how to use the latest version actually. On load itself, it will always show the, the default version what is currently available. So this is a version 2.6 is the current version of Digit. We still use that. Then uh, the next is uh, we'll see some uh, something about DS also. Let's assume I want to take this code to my system now. I'm going to implement a new uh, state implementation. What I need to do and where uh, which code I need to refer to. As I said. Uh, we call it as a digit OSS. See, this is the repo. Uh, this is the URL where so digit OSS. So it always contains the latest version of uh, uh, code. Actually, uh, it's as, as I said, it's a two point six. If you are using. So it also shows the different tagged versions also, 2.3456 actually. And releases also we will get here. So what are the uh, releases happened actually? And what are the changes added actually? You will get the history here in the digit OSS. And here, uh, digit OSS, uh, this we need to fork actually. Okay, if I am 
going to implement it instead. It contains the latest version. And here, if you fork this entire folder, it is, uh, we can use it for the new state actually. I'll, I'll show the real, uh, uh, our UKD example also, how this is structured and how we are implement, using it actually. If, if you observe a little bit here, the structure is, uh, what we did is previous versions of before 2.4, uh, we have a separate services for municipal services, business services, core services like that. Now in this uh, versions of what we did, we combine all these reports and different reports under one repo actually. Digit OSS is a one repo. Under that, you will get everything is bundled together actually. So, in the previous versions, if you go to e-governments actually, uh, we'll get uh, different things like you have municipal services, this kind of thing. So, municipal services also, they say one separate repo previously. Now, this is we what we did instead of keeping separately municipal services, core services like that. It is bundled together as a one digit OSS actually. So if you observe here, core services is a one bundle, business service separate, municipal service separate. All the front end, so whatever front end UI changes require, this is also combined under front end actually. And EDCR and finance are the two additional modules which are running as a coexistence mode actually. Uh, this EDCR is for uh, drawing purpose actually. When building plan upload system we are using, uh, we are also able to configure the draw development control rules actually. So drawing rules also we are configuring using this service actually. So similarly finance module also, when any financial transaction if you want to enable actually, this is a separate service we added as a finance. And there are some set of utility services we added here as a part of digit OSS. So it kind of, so we'll explore more actually, what is inside this utilities? If you go inside utilities, we have uh, some set of Android printer connection, weekly emailer, uh, these kind of some custom things are added here. Like week, uh, one of the service like weekly emailer, what happens is for customer, if you want to give kind of report, every week you want to know what is the status, the progress happened, in your live environment, we can configure that using the weekly email notifier. So that using this service, we are able to push a weekly emails to the set of top guys who will get the notification on the progress of each, the records actually. The progress of the, the number of transactions happened, the improvement in the collection, those things we can define in the, as a part of report. In that report, we can communicate to all the, the set of persons actually who are interested to know the status every week. So similarly, uh, those kind of functionalities we provided. Similarly, if you go inside uh, core services. So we have, uh, see if you observe here, we have more than 20 services up there. So why I'm explaining all these things is when you are going to live or any state, first what we are deciding is which are all the services I want. It may not necessarily that you are trying to implement all the uh, municipal services like maybe I may need to go live with property tax or water charges in the first version or first stages. Then what are the services I want to configure and that also we need to decide actually. It is not like a, uh, we need all the services actually. We may need some set of services, right? So how to do that, I'll explain actually. See example, when you are saying core services, these are the core info actually. We need whether uh, these are the common things required for all the modules actually. The, the reason is example, as I said, we divide it into smaller services. Um, take some of the example. Example, when I'm uploading the file store, I have the file services. It's an ID gen, ID gen service we are using to generate the numbers. If you have any different type of formats of the numbers, what we need to do is we need to configure actually, like my receipt number formats are different, certificate numbers formats are different. These things we are, see most of them are configurable, plus we are using this, this service to use that configurations to format that numbers. That's how we are using the ID gen. Similarly, we have an indexer service to index all the data. If I want to push 
the data, whatever I inputted, I also can push this data to Elasticsearch. So we are using indexes. We have a localization. So all the data, whatever uh, uh, we, we are showing in the UI, everything is configurable actually. See, in the, if this is a, one of the, our UAT environment, so here on load itself, uh, you can see the keys and now it is changed, right? How it is working is, see these are the localizations we configured actually. So each field, whatever is there here, these are all localization keys uh, uh, we are adding in the database level and uh, this key value pair we maintain actually. So for each text uh, key, what is the value and that we are pasting in the UI. So this data is, uh, this is managed using the localization service because when you go like with any new city the some set of localization keys if you want example it by default we are providing hindi and english if you want in this case odia what we need to do is we need to take all the keys which are in hindi and english we need to push any of the format code and we need to change add the odia related things into that localization and we need to push some using APIs, those things. So those APIs, everything is handled by the localization service. If you see further, actually we have the notification service for SMS, email, and we have a master data management. MDMS is nothing but master data management. How to manage the master data also is, uh, it's using through the services. We have a OTP service, user service, persister service, telemetry services, URL shortening, when you're sending the URL, if you want to send it as a short and URL, so we are using these services. We have a user services, workflow services. So overall, we need to understand why we are using these services, PDF services, these kind of things. These are all like our core services. As I said, we are divided into smaller parts so that we can, it's easy to modify, it's easy to test, easy to deploy, and easy to scale. These are the concepts are behind this microservice, uh, the architecture, what we define actually here. And these are the other things I'll explain actually how these other services are used actually. Similarly, if you go, these are the core services. If you are implementing any new state, core services are mandatory and we are going to use these services, the set of services by default we need to use. The second one is uh, similarly business service. When business service come into picture, as I defined, we have very minimal here. I have a collection service, which do collection and some set of uh, billing service. Billing service covers our demand, how to generate, how to generate my bill, those kind of things we are covering using the billing services. HRM is used for the employee management and apportion service is a, it's like when you are dividing the amount actually, when you need the partial payment of the amount, how to manage. We, those details is managed using the support system. Out of the 100, if I want to split for tax, sales, all those things, those logics are decided by using these apportion service we are using. Some financial related APIs are there here in the business service. If you see the, and the main part is municipal service. So here, the main services are required uh, comes into picture. So here, all the municipals like uh, we have the, if you see here, we give the conventions like this. This is water and sewerage, uh, uh, where we added like this. So similarly, TL means trade license, PT means property tax, public grievance is PGR, NOC is separate. So we, uh, FSM, vehicle management system, fire NOC. So these are the different services we added actually for municipal services. So as an implementation team, majorly we need to work on these services actually, because as if example, when I'm going with property tax for the new state, uh, the main logic, what we, the code we need to touch is these municipal services because collection, demand, all those things are, it's a platform related functionality. It fits in many clients, but customizations may come majorly in my calculation logics, all those kind of things. So if you observe one more thing here for each service, example, this is a building plan approval service. We define two things. One is service, one is calculator. 
Similarly, fire and OC is a service and calculator. So we structured like this property tax, service and calculator. Uh, and similarly, sewerage tax, sewerage service and calculator, trade license service and calculator. So this is a structure we added, uh, divided the services actually. Application part normally is in this uh, uh, services actually. When I'm registering a new trade license, what I'm doing is I am just adding that logic in the trade license services. So on the business logics like my calculations, those kind of things, we added in the calculator service. So this is a overall uh, the structure we used to define the uh, services. We split the services like this. Okay. So what we need to do is uh, this is the digit OSS and show one of the uh, services what we currently lively using for the Uttarakhand. Actually, take this as a Uttarakhand. So we created a separate Git account for the client actually. So the client, when we uh, Uttarakhand, when we are implementing state by we created a separate Git account and we created a multiple repositories here. If you observe here, I have a five repositories. One is digit UKD. So this UKD is forked from the digit OSS. So we forked the entire digit OSS uh, uh, things and renamed it as digit UKD. And all my services are here actually, and it is under masters now. So it may be when I forked, it may be on 2.4 or 2.5, everything. The idea behind this, why we are doing this is, so I can fetch upstream every time when I want to upgrade. So it's easy to upgrade directly using the uh, different latest version automatically. That's the reason we uh, defined like this. So this is one is digital oasis we are taking directly all these things. Second one is we added our own customization code actually. So this is uh, every client, if I want to add some set of new functionalities, everything. What we did, we created our own customization activity. It's a one more service. So it's, it's already there previously from our uh, existing folder. We just grouped under one umbrella now, like under Egan Nagar server. That's why it is for from the different brand. So it's previously created for Rainmaker customization. So here, as a client specific, we have our own set of changes, whatever I want, those changes I'm doing here. So we'll go in more detail, what is this and why we are using this, why it is required. Example, asset is one of the service I added and I added all the images of my city images here. See, each city has its own image. So folder wise, what we did, we are creating the logo. So we are saving that logo here. So this, this is one way actually. So there are different ways to uh, save the images, everything. But one way is I created my own set of assets as a one more service folder. And under that I'm keeping all my images and I'm referring this in my application. So this is purely a client specific things actually I grouped. And if I want to add my own set of uh, services, I'm adding my own custom services and I'm keep on adding the new, new functionalities and I'm going to utilize this for my new clients actually. So this is purely customizable services, one separate uh, repo we created. One is digit by default one, customer specific. The third one is MDMS data. So each client has its own set of MDMS data. So uh, we also, uh, this is a digit by defaultly providing uh, the uh, MDMS formats also. So the same thing we can use and I can define my own data here. We'll go in detail actually how it is structured and everything. This is MDMS. Last one is uh, DevOps actually. So DevOps uh, is also important. So uh, as we said, we marking everything as Docker images and we are orchestrated under the Kubernetes cluster. So we are using the Helm charts and we are defining different environments for it actually. For example, when I'm defining my, if you observe here, we have a dev separate, production separate, UAT separate files. So these files we are going to use to configure different environment level setups. So digit, so basically we need to understand how to configure 
and um, how to make use of these configurations is very important. So I'm showing you the UAT configuration here. I have my own set of values actually. All my database details, everything I'm configuring here. And um, these are the file stores where I'm mentioning what are the services I'm going to use also. And for each service, further, if I want to override something, example, uh, I'm just adding the security features, the memory configurations, everything for this particular service I'm configuring in this Helm chart. So, so there are multiple uh, ways uh, we are using here like, so this is the configuration level. So I can increase the number of uh, pod sizes, everything at this level only. Example, Okay, so, so we have just added replicas as two, so that when I'm deploying this service, it will create two replicas actually of this heap size and this memory. So it is just a config. If tomorrow if we feel, okay, we need to increase further actually, we just increasing these replicas so that it's automatically the deployment level, it is easy to increase those number of pods actually. Okay, so this is the configuration file where uh, the same uh, billing service, uh, what we are doing is uh, we configured everything actually, like what are the services required, what are the service related, any configurations are there, we can enable. Example, SMS service is there. I can disable this SMS by just enabling this two or false configuration. If I enable it is false, the SMS will not send actually. Further, if I want to print that in the console mode, I can use that actually in the SMS services. Okay, so that that is a uh, that is the configuration level changes we can do at the environment level. So in the same way, my production configurations are different, and all the things are we are the passwords are not we are enclosing. It's saving the secret files actually. So it's a, these are all encrypted things we are using all the things and these encrypted ones only we are using in different environment. So this is the Helm chart actually where we are adding all the parameters relays at, uh, it's, it's a configurable Helm related thing. Similarly, I can also override the logics actually under different services. We, we are able to configure these configurations. I can override those details are available here. Okay, so this is DevOps related thing. So as a Nagarsiva, what we did is one is OSS we copy, one is Rainmaker customization, one is master data management service, one is DevOps. This is uh, something like implementation kit, it is different, right? We, to load the data or anything, we have a, we provided implementation kit also, and we grouped on the, the same client actually. So this is the overall structure of the, uh, uh, how to fork and what we need to use is mentioned here. And the last point I want to add one more st uh, step here is, so how to know that what are the uh, dependency service required? So example, take property types. How to know that is, it's a, an easier way is, see this is our structure actually. If you open any document, you'll get the readme document under each one and it will give the overall idea, example. This, see, give the overall idea like what is the property tax and what are the dependency uh, services required, everything we are going to mention here. So these are the different uh, dependency services we mentioned here, along with this actually. And uh, in some, uh, for each service, we are also defining what is the swagger documents, like what are the APIs we have, that also we define under each service actually. So you have a search API, we have a create API, update API, and the definition, the structure, everything we define for. So this Swagger document is available wherever there are required services there, and also we already Postman Collection script also. 
so that the service individually we can uh, use and we can test easily we can understand what are the contracts we have for the service and how this uh, we're using postman collection also we can cross check actually so this is the same uh, we can use actually why i'm asking is when uh, this is one of the uh, things uh, we observed actually like when we are implementing what are these dependency service required it's a little bit confused actually when for example i'm i want trade license service only trade license i want to use across these multiple services and just so it's easy is it will show what is my dependency services so this is in the under code this mdms is master data localization id generation user billing services required and calculator required these are the so some set of basic services required to for the trade license model we have the swagger contract you can see what is the swagger contract uh, what are the apis is available here so this we can share with the third party integration clients also example we also integrated with uh, uh, banks uh, what is that uh, you can integrate with the third parties also that time we can share the set of urls also so that they can uh, use our system so one minute i forget one so is a uh, one point here is when we are opening the urls so how we are restricting also important so everything is rule based access i want to share something here so what what we are doing is each endpoint what we have it is going to our zool power zool actually so zool is a uh, uh, as i defined here we are managing all the authentication and authorization through the service when any request is goes through zool actually we are, we are expecting some set of things like it may be it's authorized user the auth tokens we are generating and also we listed something some set of urls as open ended and mixed ended open ended is nothing but these are all the urls without logging in anything they can see actually why we added this is we need some open search kind of things apis where the citizen can search property tax directly and then what he can do is he can pay free things online without logging in so how we are supporting this kind of feature is we are using the open endpoint testing actually the same way mixed endpoints is we we are not saying it's a open internally we are expecting some set of urls we are using the system users that kind of user as a internally it will assign and it will use actually that is we are uh, moving at the mixed endpoints for other remaining things it's mandatory we expecting the authorization actually so for that we have a role action concept actually that that's how it is configured actually i want to break here for stop here i want to listen from the team actually any confusion here feel how to uh, uh, create a branches and the digit structure if it is clear i go further uh, with my uh, configuration and customization i want to go further actually how to do that actually uh, thanks pradeep for giving this uh, for the participants uh, yes request all of you to put your questions in the chat screen or the q and a box meanwhile we have one question by mr abdul bashir uh, let me read that out for you is is asking uh, are these services interconnected for example remittance of permit fee uh, which has to be reflecting in the accounting module so are all these services interconnected see how the how it works is example and uh, it's a nice question i'll show you see example in the municipal surveys see how when we are structuring how it runs is these are all the different services run in the back end actually each services is is a separate actually when you are saying remittance when the amount is collected so the, the collection is happening on the particular collection service so collection service is there under business service we have the collection service when the money is collected it may be for online or something so internally how service to service is communication happening is one way is through synchronous call another way is asynchronous call So most of them we made it asynchronous. What we are doing is, so this collection service completed its task. It's collected the money now, which is push this data to the Kafka topic. From the Kafka topic, we have a listeners. What the finance module 
if you want to enable we need to enable the finance module the finance service will read this and internally based on based on the topics it will pass the voucher in the financial module that's how it works actually the same concept for other services also. example on payment collection i want to move the record from workflow level so what happens here is workflow service will listen this once the amount is collected workflow will initiate the workflow to the next level this is how the services are communicating each other actually so we used uh, we are defining the kafka topics for each one and i'll i'll show the structure also later so maybe it's a right hand to show i'll show that actually how we structured actually so that that's how the services are communicating each other actually in the microservice environment so we we use the same concept and uh, it's it's uh, that's how it is communicating in the services actually any thank you pradeep for that any other questions uh, not until now uh, request the participants to post their questions in the chat box or the q and a uh, box as well uh, pradeep but i have a question because this is something which partners tend to ask when we are on the calls as well how easy is it for somebody to just uh, pick off the code which you've already shown here as well uh, from github and fork it and kind of run their own pilot or a poc as well how easy is it from a uh, implementation perspective see we we need uh, some devops team help actually it is not uh, like uh, locally if you want to do this also mm -hmm. we need to run some set of services as i clearly mentioned so we also added a pilot also in our digit.org how to run a, a simple one example pgr as a one of the example we provided how okay. to run the pgr service locally when you are setting up actually how to set up that actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that will give overall idea about how to set up uh, locally and running local machine actually so i i'll share with you actually how to do that similarly also uh well, what we did is it's it's running in aws so that you see the point here is we need set up services to run locally so when you are running example if i show my environment there are multiple services are running in the back end actually so these uh that we need to decide actually what are the services required first i want to configure and which i want to run actually and based on the requirement of the concerned services we need to run locally and we can test up see this is my production environment these many services are running as i said this mgram seva is uh, sorry this is one of the environment we have a different topics we have a elastic search is running we have a kafka is running we have a mdms is running see some of multiple actually why it is because see i have a two pods are running two calculator services two water services we are running like this okay. there are different services are running in the back end actually and and this we are going to use actually see uh, locally also we can uh, we have the steps actually how to okay. run this actually locally and uh, we provided a simple steps actually you just follow it and it will automatically take the code and uh, it's deploying everything it will do actually i'll share that code so okay. we have that uh, that option also in this document actually okay super thanks for that tonight oh okay we've got another question by miss shweta parashar uh, can you show us apis in swagger with parameters and output that is the question okay yeah parameters and output okay let me go to collection service so this is our collection service system so when uh, we are doing collection anything actually we are using this service so here we define there are four apis are published here one is search create validate and workflow so the create so this is uh, 
So it will give the overall structure actually. Uh, see, request info is common for this is a standard. We we follow some uh, standard set of things like request info is mandatory for each API, and these are the structures we added. And similarly, this is the payment object. What are the parameters required and what are mandatory that we can see here? So these are the ones, these are the requests and these are the response. We can use uh, Postman script also, ma'am, actually, when we are running locally, actually. Using these contracts, we also publish the Postman script so that the same thing you need to give the parameters actually. What are the parameters you need to fill and and the response also it will show actually as the output what we are getting actually. So every request we need uh, so uh, our token actually we have a APIs to generate the our token for based on the username and password and that we need to pass along with these APIs every time so that uh, we can uh, push the data to the system actually so it will go through the authentication and authorization then only the records and the data will be pushed to the system actually yeah okay thank you Pradeep hope that answers your question Ms. Shweta Parashar and also Mr. Abdul Bashir the previous question so okay, we'll go to the uh, further steps. Uh, next one is, uh, I want to share more things about the state implementation. What are the prerequisites? So uh, I'm just moving to the next one. Okay. So um, as an implementation, so if you divide it into five different parts, actually, as we know, uh, one thing is uh, the Ponsa project is, uh, it's a video into five stages, actually. So this is for uh, one of our OVPS to define, actually. I'm just sharing the same ideas here, actually. So when any new project comes, normally what we are doing is we are just starting with our uh, what are the different things required actually, to start these projects actually we need to identify a uh, different infrastructure required and whether we need any partners to do this and we need who is heading all these things that is the initial stage actually the next one is as an implementation first we need to identify what are the things uh, which are the cities we are going live what are the stages we are releasing the different modules those things are also important and when once I finalize what are the modules I'm going to do, what are the things I'm releasing in different stages. Next step is we need to start collecting data from the clients actually. So MDMS is coming to picture here. So master data when we are collecting, uh, it's very important that what are the master data required for digit is also very important. Without knowing my MDMS configuration. So we can't go further actually because I need to ask my client to configure this particular service. I need this set of master data. So one is master data setup. Second one is also we need to understand what's the client requirement and how much it fits with my the default platform provided things and what are the customizations required for this. There are chances like that the, the, the naming conventions, what we are using is different. The flow may be different. As a product, I configured the three level workflow. The client may ask five level workflow, how to configure that. How to, so this we need to list out first. So where all the gaps are there, what are the enhancements we need to do that we need to list out first before I jump into start doing any development. So in the designing part, uh, there are other things. I'll, I'll explain further actually, what are the other parameters we need to check first before I start doing any development. Maybe I need to integrate examples like I want to integrate with my bank, different kind of payment gateways. I want different formats, output, all this kind of thing. So when, when we're discussing all these things, one thing is required is MDMS. MDMS is in the sense, in, as I defined already, one of the uh, configuration we use is uh, this father document. MDMS configuration. 
So what is this MDMS? Uh, I'll just brief you a little bit about MDMS and how it works actually. MDMS example here, if you see, this is my production data of the UK. It's production are UAT water cell. What we did is, uh, these are the different configurations uh, we can configure the MDMS here. If you see here, we have many folder structures here. Okay. We'll go in a little bit details here. What is this service? What is this folders? Why we added like this? We'll go further. Before that, there is some, one master configuration is there, MDMS master configuration. If you observe here, so these are the different uh, MDMS. What are the four files, what I have, what I show inside. Those we listed here, actually. What are the different types of MDMS we have on the, the primary key and what is the combination we are using as a MDMS for each of the master data. It's nothing but previously, uh, in the, it's another way is in the database level, I can keep all the master data. Like we have a uh, trade types, trade subtypes, the user types. These are the different types of master for the trade license. Okay, What are the different types of trades? Our, this is what I can do is I can configure this in the database level is one format. Another way is what we are doing is we are converting everything is in the JSON format. So it's in the file system format we are saving all this data and using this MDMA service every time we are utilizing this data. So if you see the commit history, I can get who or all modify this data and when it is changed, everything I'll get a mistake with this approach actually. So Entire MDMS master data, we are saving in the JSON format here, including our configurations, everything. As I showed you uh, some set of, I'll show you some set of other configurations also, how I can configure. So these entire configurations plus master data, we are saving in the master data management system. It's an MDMS unit. Here, uh, if you observe here, there are something called property tags, trade license, you can see module names you can see here but some systems like almora almora is a city name actually so the system uh, this platform will support you to configure city level module level and some are generic level so this is how we structure this thing actually so each city when we are going live example i went live only with almora as a one city i just added the configuration required for that particular city and i'm gone live and tomorrow later, if I want to add 10 more cities, I can add this kind of folder structures which are required to configure only client specific or city specific. That I can add it easily using the folder structure and I can configure this MDMS actually. Okay. So, what is their example? Almora, if I open, I have module wise again, I have some configurations. One is location. Location is boundary, obviously like boundary information is specific to a particular ULV actually. So here we have some standard structure. One is tenant ID model name is mandatory. The third one is, so this is nothing but our location master and the master name. This is the structure we use. So this is one JSON we are using to define the boundaries actually. So if you observe here, it's a boundary type. It's a ward number or something. It's a first is block. Under block, we have a locality. Under locality, under this block, I have multiple locality. That's what it shows actually, right here. Yeah. So under one block, I have multiple localities. Under another block, I have another set of localities. This we configured for one set. Is it easy is a question now actually. What we did is we have some tools also provided so that I data kit where I showed in the previous things, right? So that there we have provided an Excel and we provided some scripts to generate this kind of JSON also. So you no need to hardcore one by one actually. We provided some kit using Excel data. It will convert this into this JSON format and we'll use that as a boundary data and we'll upload here. Okay, see that is a structure we used here. This is for the city specific. Similarly, Okay, there are some more things are there. So, example, I have a property tax. Property tax level, if I want to add my tax rates, city specific, I can define using these configurations. So, for each financial year, 
the start date end date i am configuring some date this is one of the example so this is how we we can configure this city specific uh, interest mutation fees rebate tax rates everything that we added here actually now the customization whatever required we added the consent json set in here Similarly, uh, next one is we, what we need to look in the master data is role action map actually. So we, what we did is we defined a different set of roles actually in the system. Uh, this is very important to understand what roles is assigned by default to uh, which user is also important. For each user, for example, we have a employee, citizen, grievance redress officer, these are the different roles. And we have a set of actions also we define. This action. See, whenever I'm saying it's a new URL, like a create property tax, that is a one URL when I'm defining. We need to add that in this action list, actually. Example, uh, just take one of the community search. This is one of the URL I added. Why I'm giving this idea is because when you are doing yourself a new enhancements tomorrow, way to configure these actions, how to map this with my role, uh, how to assign this to a particular user to understand all these things. We need these basic ideas, where to configure this action. So these, these are the files where you need to define this action. This is a particular action and that is, and you can map all these things to it's in the role action mapping. So in the role action mapping, what happens? For a particular role, you are adding what is the action action you are going to use actually okay so this is how we are mapping actually for this particular action what is the uh, roles we are mapping that also we are configuring the user role action mapping actually this is the mdma and now if you come to the property tax or some see these are the model specific what we need state level i can configure some set of default logics actually Right, so I'll, I'll show you trade license only when we time we discuss one. So, example, I can define the uh, state level trade types. So, I, we just configured like if the trade is industry and the subtype is FN. So, these are all localizations we can add actually. So, what is CLG means what? So, we can add all this kind of uh, localizations for these things as a name. So, to show in the UI. And what are the documents required for this particular trade? We are configuring for the trade types, right? So we, we configured like this. So this is all configuration um, we can add actually for a particular module. So live stocks, BS. So these are the localization keys are adding. BS means what? And what are the documents required? And is it uh, active or fast based on that? We can enable disable also this particular service. So this way, we can configure module wise trade types module wise we can add the application types see there are two types of application one is new and renewable currently so this also uh, we are adding at the state level so if uh, i have a penalty rates i can configure here easily what is the for this financial year what is the penalty rates i want to configure at the state level so the same way, the same file, if I copy under the particular city, what happens is first the logic, what we added is first we look at the city level. If that is not there, we are looking at the state level. So this is the uh, this is the city specific uh, state level configuration, that is city specific configuration. Come to another one is if you see this a common master is one of the services there where we added some set of formats actually. So ID gen format is one JSON. Is a one file where I can configure all my number formats actually. Example uh, here is a self explanatory few things like my water connection number. This is my format. So this is a sequence it internally creates actually for each city actually. So here when I add a tenant ID, tenant ID, uh, this common service, what happens is it will create for each tenant file. That's how we configure. I can manage a separate meter number for each tenant. And this is a sequence it will use actually. Okay, so this is the format we added as of now MP slash city code slash financial year. And we are adding this format we can modify tomorrow when you're showing your client, if they're saying, okay, this is number is you want to change, this is the place you want to modify this ID, ID number format. 
And similar to that, we added all the set of other standard uh, department list, designation list. These are all the different masters required in the service level that we configured here, the different type of structures. The unit of measurements. So these are all the masters we added and we are going to use at the state level. Okay, one more thing I missed here is state info. When you are looking the state info table, here we'll get the Uttarakhand, uh, these banners, right? When I am logging in the first sheet itself, how to configure different languages, what is my default language I want to select, those things we are adding here in the configuration level. For example, I'll, I'll show you Uttarakhand. So this is uh, my landing page. We provided some set of open URI. So when, when I'm saying open URI, what happens? Without logging in, I can search some set of values. By default, I'm getting the English, Hindi, these languages. I can uh, go with uh, I'm just giving an example. See, all these things, these are all open URL use. I can pay the time. Similarly, if I want to log in as a citizen, this is my landing page. The landing page, I'm showing some background here. I'm showing some language. This is my default language. It's showing as Hindi by default. How this is all handling is it is not by the coding actually. We have made it configurable so that what you can do is here, we are just adding this. What is my banner? What is my logo? What is my banner? What is my logo I need to show here? And also we are able to configure what are the different languages I want. It's English or Hindi. Also, I can say what is my default language I want. It's a Hindi. They I added default language as Hindi. If I change to English by default in this page, English will be up here. So this this is how we uh, provided a configuration so that you just change this file and if you do what it will do it will reflect automatically in the main sheet actually so this is a state info json actually and so here we need to configure actually what are the things required even we can disable the set of modules also actually what are the modules uh, you want what you want modules you don't want help documents if you want user manuals we can attach all these options are available in the mdms level actually as i said it's a data plus configuration software and these are all documented also in our digit.org actually where on what are the configurations we have and as i said i can disable enable set of modules also for a particular state also when i'm going live actually those configurations we can do so this is the main thing we need to observe in the commons master uh, next, last one I want to show you the tenant is uh, this MDMS is tenant information. Uh, Pradeep, there was one question yeah. uh, by Mr. Nitesh Parmar. Uh, why do they store the boundary data in JSON? And uh, the continuing question was, are all setups stored in JSON file? I think you've answered the second question, but the first question, why do we store boundary data in JSON? So why we need is, uh, example, when I log in, when I'm using this boundary data in, in my the entire it's instead of in the database, what we're doing is we are saving in the JSON format actually. It is, see, all our MTMS uses the JSON format data actually. So, the, we structured like that. Sir. So, it is uh, entire MTMS we configured with the, this one actually. As we said, we have both options. One is every time you read from the database is one option. Another option is we formatted like that. It's a, we are taking a call like that. Okay, the boundary also we can. It's a one-time task actually. Yes, I agree, but if uh, sometime what happens if they want to modify anything, they can use uh, the boundary JSON and they can modify it. And also it is city specific. Every time when they want to go live with a new city, they just prepare this set of, some set of data for a particular city and they'll keep adding here actually. So it, it is a structure, we structured like that. It is, we are expecting the data should be in JSON and we provided the, uh, Toolkits also to generate this easily using the Excel. So it's prepared in the Excel standard format, converted to JSON, and paste it in this particular folder. 
then automatically it will reflect in the concerned city when i select this almora almora locations will come automatically in the ui it's a design we design like this something it's a design mostly for convenience and yes, customer convenience. yes and and we feeling it's easy also now see as i said we are going live with around 100 city we every time when we need we are just preparing this and we are loading for the service that's how it is and it's easy to go in the incremental mode also so last one in the mdms one more uh, thing is required i want to come come to here is the tenant out json so is a tenant out json is a one way we are listing all the tenants required actually so if i want to add a dehradun dehradun is a one they are just giving all the existing url logo information the contact information the lat long information everything in the tenant information so here every time when i go live with a new city i'm just adding this tenants here the concerned tenant folder i will add and i'm making the city live actually if i remove that from here this list will not show in the all the users top down everything that's how it is configured so it is a haldwani one city haridwar we is one city we added in this way we are who is a contact address everything so once you logging in you will get the concerned information of the city using this json actually similarly as i said city module information i can configure city module also so i can say tl i don't i want only for some set of cities i don't want for other cities i can configure that also so we added that configuration here so that i can control if i want to stop uh, some set of modules for Uh, some cities it's not required we can block using this configuration city and uh, tenant information mapping so similarly uh, uh, we have other configurations also like i we are sending some sms i can block for city by those kind of things also we can configure it uh, rebate and penalty i can configure for some new cities and uh, how to disable that uh, it's a customization we did actually So what we are doing is we are calculating the rebate only for some set of cities. Those configurations also it's possible actually. This is the overall MDMS structure actually. It's very important to understand this. Now next is uh, this is okay. So now as I showed you, there are module wise I need some set of different different uh, uh, data actually. How to collect this from the client? so this it provides uh, some set of documentation on that also like example if you open the customization folder here we provided a template for this actually So, so when normally uh, some set of I want to add some more uh, uh, points here. Actually, what are the other things required when I am going with the uh, any new city? Actually, so like uh, we provided a template. Actually, we need to decide what are the languages they want because when they are saying I need some Canada or English, uh, sorry Hindi, Tamil. we need the concerned localization keys also we have a set of keys and which is in english similar to that we need to collect those information and uh, majorly uh, the number formats with they have their own template formats uh, we have we provided as a part of receipt format defaultly but client may expect my certificate format should be different my uh, receipt format should be different my numbers number when i am giving a unique number for each one property i expecting in a different format those are all the different thing uh, expectation from the client similarly i have a qr code in many of my certificate but when i scan it they may expect additionally i want some more information for example who approved it we added majorly but still as a implementation when i observe they keep on modifying this like uh, they want to add some more additional things to that so how to uh, we need to collect those information similarly the file store when i am doing uh, file when i am saving uh, 
whether I want, so it depends actually where you are deploying also. Majorly, if you are going with Azure, AWS, these, uh, these things, then it is easy actually. But some places, the customer expect us to implement, deploy all these things on the STC environment, state data centers. State data centers, major problem is uh, you need, uh, you, you won't get that much internet access, the file store, all these things are the matter because our upfront, we need to plan overall how much space is required. That we need to decide based on the load and expected uh, number of users who are going to use the system. Based on these uh, some ideas, we need to ask the number of machines required for the with the STC team actually. And we need the proper uh, internet facility to install some set of things actually. Why I'm asking is example logos when I'm Currently, majorly we are using Azure. We are pushing the, all the logos in the Azure level and we are using, but it didn't work out in some set of, in STC environment. Every call, you, you want to make a request outside and get the file and show in the UI. This, this is one option. Other option is save these files locally in your local system and refer from there is another option. So this, uh, this issue is also, this, as I showed you in the previously, we created asset folder and we added all the logos and we are referring from them. As a part of code itself, it is available. Now, these logos we need to collect from the ULBs. We need to collect all the localization things. As I said, the workflow is also very important. There are different workflows they will expect in uh, level actually. Majorly in our implementation team, we are working more on the correcting their workflows things only. Suddenly after showing the client, they will come up with a new ideas like, okay, at this level, give one more option to do field survey, give the report, let them submit the report, one more uh, approval required at the admin level at particular stage. So they, there is multiple changes may come actually. So as an implementation team, we need to analyze this first itself, what is the flow they are expecting. That also it's better to uh, get in the initial stage so that workflow we can configure it actually. We have a different uh, services actually their uh, workflow, we have a separate workflow service. Using that workflow service, we have a standard structure, how to configure this. Using that, we need to uh, define that again, okay? And, um, and the next one is there are multiple NOC integrations may come actually. We, in the, that we observed in one of our uh, module like building plan approach system. When you're applying, you need some set of third party integrations also. So, uh, so you need to call the third party APIs in that case and how to integrate that with the current system. That also we need to plan. Uh, similarly, the major things like SMS, email, these accounts also, how to configure also important. So these, what we provided, SMS, email, all these things, these are all configurable at the environment level. Currently, in the, if you see this, um, Environment level, we have some configurations we added so that you just modify these parameters, then it will work automatically. For example, I'll show you raw. So my SMS configuration when I'm using, I using some different provider actually. Okay, so this is the URL I'm using uh, every time to send the SMS. We have this to pass this some set of parameters. If I pass this, I'll this is the end, just a configuration required to configure this actually. Similarly, for mail also, we have some set of uh, configurations required. Once you do that, so these are all uh, secrets we added actually, the username and password. So it will use as that and it will push this data. But these parameters are decided based on the type of the SMS provider. When you are using with the uh, we are using SMS County, we use BSNL, all these we integrated. The parameters are different actually. Those things we need to configure at the environment level so that this we are going to use in the applications actually. So similarly, bank integrations, by default we provided an access bank. When, when access bank is configured, what are the uh, changes required? Uh, we need to mention actually, here we have a easy pay access merchants, Paytm we integrated, phone pay we integrated. So those configurations also we need to add, but in case of uh, bank integration, what happens? We need to plan for the additional work because they provide a set of APIs. We need to 
that we need to cross check with the your urls also when you are uh, testing they will whitelist your uat environment production environment those kind of things that we need to uh, we need to but we need to include that in your in gateways you are going to integrate and uh, reconciliation logic also very important when the transaction failed so how to reconcile it actually that is also very important so by default we provided the access bank integration currently we and in other client cases we used stfc different different banks we integrated already as we showed pt and uh, other things also we integrated but it's a client specific but in the product by default we provided the access bank integration this we need to uh, when why i'm asking all these things is when you are doing any new implementation you need to plan to there's a work involved for all these things so we need to plan a specific time a extra development effort also required for these customizations so similarly we uh, there is a chances like we need to uh, study the existing systems also there is a, a uh, ongoing system if it is running you may need some additional effort for the migration also so how to migrate is also important uh, i'll explain that is a part of the last one so how we are doing is normally we provided uh, we are using the same api For example property create same api are using but the data we are pushing using the integration uh, kit actually we are using that so similarly if you want to do it any google integration we need some uh, uh, additional configuration for the google uh, integration those kind of things the ssl configuration so uh, overall when you want to collect all this information from the client we provided a some set of templates for it actually for the master data configuration there are two types again here one is environment when you are setting up at the state level what are the uh, and data is required we listed somewhere and similarly if you are going with the ulb level what are the information required as, we, as i said state level i want tenant information sms email any uh, google play store if you want to uh, put apk actually yeah, by creating this that information any pause you want to configure we have those options actually departments designations localization keys these are all we need to collect at the state level team but there are some set of data which i need to collect at the ulb level also so ulb level like i want boundary data and uh, the bank informations of the ulb so this is a okay, boundary information is required at ulb level and if you want to go with a master module wise each module expecting some set of additional data For example if you if i take uh, property tax module property tax module wants some set of uh, different parameters For example this is a property type sub type all these things actually okay these all owner uh, type this kind of thing and similarly these are the state level at ulb level so i want tax rates of the ulb wise their tenants their mutation fees rebates everything so these we provided a template here actually if you click on this it will give more detail actually what are the different data it is expected what is mandatory to go with individual detail we provided the a checklist kind of thing we provided the excel sheet also for to collect these data for module specific ulb specific and state specific so this you need to share with the client actually so first you need to list out the list of master data is required to collect from the client either from the state or ulb level and what are the enhancements is required we need to study the fit mind and then further we'll go for the uh, implementation part of it so this is the uh, uh, overall actually like uh, if you go with the service wise also it clearly mentions what are the services we have in uh, core service as i said workflow when you are configuring uh, how to configure workflow if you want to study here this info uh, you need to go through this uh, document actually it will give how to configure your workflow and how to create it all those things it will explain actually Uh, so we all those documents also is provided here actually uh, how to mdms was payment gateways everything we provided all the information what are the uh, apis swagger documents everything is provided here 
For example, uh, access they define actually what are the parameters we are using and how we are passing reconciliation logic. All this information is available here. Okay. So this is overall on the uh, implementation specific. So any questions here, I'll stop here and uh, I'll further go for the customization part actually. How we can customize our UIs and uh, we'll further discuss uh, how to, what are the other uh, functionalities we have actually. Yes, there are a couple of questions, uh, Pradeep. Uh, yeah. First question is by Mr. Nikhil Patwa. How yeah. secure is the data stored in JSON and what customer information is suitable to be stored in JSON? See, uh, as I said, these are all, uh, entire thing is an open source. Uh, as I said, wherever secrets are required, we encrypting it and we are saving actually. That they can't do. So it's in the encrypted format and we are using that logic to get those information. Otherwise, this is not master data. So we are not, uh, there's no any uh, PIL information we are not saving. And uh, next one, so all the data what we are uh, saving, so we are not saving like user information anywhere in our MDMS. These, all the other information are we are encrypting and we are saving in our services. We have a separate service called encryption service. This service we are using to when, when we see our database also, all the data is in the encryption format. Come to data in the MDMS, we are not saving any other information which are any related to any personal things actually. And username, password, as I already discussed, all are in the encrypted format and we are using. Okay, thank you. Hope that answers your question, Mr. Patwa. Uh, the next question is by Mr. Arkit Das. How to configure if all ULBs are using the same bank integration? Yeah, so the payment uh, payment gateway is uh, it's at the state level only currently what we configured. If you want, uh, uh, we are not configured like it's a it's a city specific. That also we can do actually. Uh, as a in Punjab, uh, we have those use cases actually for a particular city. If you want a only. We didn't get this requirement, but we implemented this in Punjab also, actually. One, uh, we have some concept as a pre-hook and post-hook. We can restrict them also to pay through some set of new banks, actually. But uh, it's at the state level, actually. All these payments we configure at the is, uh, state level, actually. This is depends, again, on the uh, payment gear. So the point here is how the money distributes also important. When payment get paid, when you are deciding, some banks like SCFC, all these things, what they are doing is you can pass a tenant ID also along with that so that internally they know that, okay, it is, they can maintain a separate account for each individual tenant and they can pass this amount to the concerned ULB banks actually. For example, I have a 10 city, Amritsar and Jalandhar as a two city in the Punjab. Uh, the bank provider, what we'll do is based on my tenant ID, what I am passing internally, they create a separate account for Amritsar and Jalandhar. Internally, they do a bifurcate amount. That is a one way. Another way is all the amount will go to the state one uh, central account. Internally, they will divide manually. That's another approach. But uh, as an implementation, we uh, we face both actually. And uh, in some client expecting it should be in the one place. Some client expecting it should be uh, it should bifurcate automatically to different accounts actually. That time. Uh, uh, it's a, it depends on the uh, it's a, the payment gateway, what we are using actually. The provider also matters here. If the APIs are supporting, then it's easy to integrate. STFC, as per my knowledge, is the one uh, he's supporting as of now. And uh, nowadays, uh, what is that? We integrated with one more client. They explicitly first they will take the tenant information and then they will process actually. By that way, they are divided. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Arkit Das. So I don't see any other open questions, uh, Pradeep. I think we can move to the next topic. And if there are, I will ask you on behalf of the participants. Yeah. So next one is, uh, I'm not going in further about DCR actually. DCR is a development control rule. So like, uh, this is one more module I, as I showed in the initially, the digit OSS part. Uh, 
there are by building bylaws are there and uh, how to configure in the system is a question so it's a very big topic if you uh, if you want uh, ankit anybody is interested on the building plans and how to configure this i'll explain more but this is one of the surveys where uh, we uh, the bylaws we need to read state specific we need to we have a different templates to capture the building bylaws and configure it actually using the edc service and we are using that is a part of the building plan service that is a part of uh, edc system actually next is customization so as i said uh, we have a different uh, mechanisms uh, we'll show actually how to uh, customize the code actually and we uh, how to do the same thing for the print end actually first i'll explain the core system actually if you i'll show what we did actually in the ukd first so we we have something called pre hook post hook concept in the zool level actually what this will do is we can configure some set of uh, so for set of url if i want to add some set of additional parameters in that url then we, we can use this pre hook and post hook concepts which we are defined in the zoo level for the concerned user before the transaction will push to the kafka what it will do is it will append some additional parameters based on the example i can decide okay based on this tenant pass the additional parameter for this request i can append those kind of things in the pre hook actually similarly post to also after uh, doing the transaction uh, on something we can add some set of uh, parameters to the entire logic actually so this uh, this is a one concept we use pre hook and post to concept other option is uh, we also uh, how we are managing is as i previously defined as a customization we have our own set of customization logic rainmaker customization and this is one of the uk specific what we are doing we have a config folder here i have my own set of uh, parameters here example uh, i have a indexer i have my own reports i can define a different different reports for which are client specific actually like i added the tl reports pt reports public grievance reports uh, these kind of uh, reports here For example, if I take PT reports, it's a configuration again. I just so we need to follow this. It's a receipt register, and what are the fields I want to refer actually? Source column. What as the output I want to show? Similarly, what are the search parameters I want to use? So these are all uh, based on the POJO. I'm just configuring actually. And uh, what are the parameters and the query also I can create here. Okay, so this is my query. This is what I'm configuring. This is one of the report. When I want a new report, I'm just adding a query here. What are the search parameters, and what are the uh, output I want to show to you? So using this report service is a one service. It will read these files and it will generate the report. And there's some set of role actions we need to add actually for this. Then. Uh, this particular uh, report will be reflected in the consent user so this is how we configured this is the client specific reports we keep adding for the pgr similarly if you see tl we added our own pgr some set of default reports are available in the product plus you can customize it also so this is a reporting section similarly when i want to change my formats or something i'm just uh, pdf services are there There are two services are there. There's a PDF service. One is format, one is data. So I modified these many formats actually. My PL services format I change, PT services, mutation receipt, NOC receipt, everything. Example, take the PT receipt. Everything is in JSON format. So here we are mentioning all the uh, what is the size, the body structure, everything. The data is here. It is just this is structure. How the uh, my receipt format will be. This is data is inputted in the using the data config. So here we are clearly mentioning for the PT receipt for the logo image or something. Refer this object and what are the fields should be returned. Wherever I have a payer input, we are saying use from this object this thing. 
So using the uh, this PDF surveys, we are printing recipe in this format. So there's no coding involved here, like we so that we can modify it easily at the by changing the structure and the input data from the object which I want to use. I'm just mapping here so that uh, I can change in this way my receipts everything. So this is my receipt day, property tax details, amount, everything we are printing here. So this we need to customize actually if based on the client information. So that's why all these things are we are defining in the customization folders and it is around configurable. Example, structure is one more. Uh, Sometimes what happens is the services are independent actually, but you want to, if you want to increase something like, uh, example, take weekly emailer. This is a, as I said, weekly emailer service. Uh, we have a service. There I want to send all the information about um, uh, my emailer. Uh, I'm just writing this query to join all the different module data. I'm getting this data and I'm using it for further processing in the weekly email. So these changes, it's a client specific we can add here. Similar to that, we added other set of things actually. When I want to search uh, bulk things, kind of thing, we are using these configurations. And so similarly, we have an indexer. I can create my own set of uh, new indexes if required, if I want to push to Elasticsearch. Persister is a place where Everything, as I said, it's a, we are not writing any, uh, we are writing the scripts actually to push data to database actually. For example, here, my calculator service, we have to insert scripts actually as a pitch table and what are the data I want to push, we define like this actually. When I'm updating, it's update script. So we added all these statements we prepared and we are pushing data from the object structure actually. Okay. So these are all uh, the persistent level we have this thing. Similarly, structure I mentioned. There are some two level is nothing. So these are the uh, uh, customizations we can do client specific things. Similarly, we have a dashboard. So how to uh, configure a dashboard is we have our own set of values. We are using these and different charts actually, and using these charts, JSON data, we are using these things for individually actually, how to, we are using it in the DSS dashboards. Okay, so this is, uh, these are the part of the customizations we used. Another thing is, uh, you can create a branches also if you want, let's, in some cases, the diff there are different ways actually. One way is we can create our own branch, we can modify the code and use that service in the build and use it in the client specific deployments. This is another approach. So, uh, before we move ahead, Pradeep, there was another question by Mr. Arkit Das Can I pick any element from array for PDF population? Yes. Array from? Can I pick any nth element from array for PDF population? I think it's in the reporting that you would, you would. Uh... Okay. So the question is, can I pick any? We are doing that, I think. We have some use cases like that. The data is like this. When you go to data, you take receipt, uh, it's in array only. Example, We use that example somewhere in the workflow history when we are showing, it's not here, but we, I'll show you that. It's used in some... Because I think he, he Mr. Arkidas also mentions that it always picks from the zeroth element, but can I pick any nth element from the array? That is the... So we, we got this use case uh, example here, I think, see. It is, uh, it's in the workflow when we are doing actually. So we are using a different uh, upload details when I'm printing. So what we are doing is we are calling it as an external API. Thing. So 
and then what we are doing here we are printing who's the assigner and I modified it so this this concept we used actually and it is we are able to print actually we need to cross check this but we we gone we gone through this use case i agree actually and uh, we use some places also this is one of the example i think here i'm able to search all the workflows and entire thing i'll print here actually using this concept so this is a process instance so this is not hard coded as zero actually okay this is using the through a particular user and it is iterating and this is the use case it's possible uh, again this one because we we face is things actually seeing all these use cases there may be the multiple active users actually this they are not hard coded as a zero value or something who are all active we are printing it actually okay we have few examples we'll check actually we uh, you know this is a open post we uh, kid das to share his email so maybe we can uh, revert with the possibilities that he could follow yeah. Okay, uh, see. Uh, so when we are doing the enhancing new things, also the same thing actually. When uh, when you are modifying the existing things, anyway, as I said, majorly we are working on the calculator service actually. So it's nothing like, as I said, the core services we are not touching. Major enhancements will come in the calculator part, which are the part of the municipal services actually. If uh, any additional things is coming, then we need to add this as a set of new services under uh, customizations, and we can make this actually. So, calculator is the one thing where all our business logic uh, we are going to modify. And if any UI customization, any backend, uh, any the front end, if you are adding any additional things, so that's why we have a, some standard set of uh, documents. Also, we added actually. So, how to what are the things we need to support and we are supposed to use actually if you add any new existing uh, fresh things also so what we suggesting is uh, we need to um, go with the yaml document first you define with a swagger and try to make this as a standard uh, apis actually and most of them should be in the post endpoints and request info is this is our standard structure Each API should contains this request info, and as a response, we'll get this a response info. Okay, and uh, uh, and try to make use of the existing these uh, services only. It's not necessary that you create your own set of roles, uh, users, those kind of things. Because if you use the central users, which is already there, we can make use actually in all the public tax create owner. If the trade line sends. Uh, we have the trade license user. When miscellaneous collection, when we are saying is a payer, in all these cases, the users when comes into picture, we are saving in the centralized system. It may be a citizen or it may be an employee, owner, all. Or we are using the this service actually, and data is saving in this user table only. So this is uh, we are suggesting when you are going ahead, if you are writing your own things, then we uh, suggest to stand follow this particular same set of standards also. So uh, this is a structure actually. When uh, uh, you are announcing, if you see our uh, any one of the surveys we have, there is a configuration consumer producer repository. This is our structure, and we have something called uh, migration DB also. If you have any specific uh, DDLs, like uh, you created your own set of new uh, tables, if you want to insert. What we need to do is we need to add those table structures here in this format. So here, 2020 is the financial year. Example, 2022, 07 is the month. This is the date. 17th is the date. 13th is the time. Minute, second. So this standard structure we use so that when you deploy in this service, so it will pick these services which will execute in this order actually. So first it will so that's how this is structured actually. Each service when you are deploying. The concerned tables also also it will create using these structures actually. 
So it will go in this order. If you want to add any new uh, set of uh, tables, you want to add in indexes, you want to add primary key constraint, those things, you need to add those things under this DB and this format section. You need to follow a next sequence number. We keep adding to that actually. This is how we structure. And comes to the coding part. This is what the simple structure we use uh, for uh, Java level actually. All the configurations like uh, see this configuration contains all uh, um, use for the configurations we are defining here. Consumers like as I defined. There's a Kafka topic we are pushing. The, when I'm pushing, example, property create is one of the create properties one of the Kafka topic. So this is that logic uh, to push the data. Normally under web, this is a standard actually under control when I'm pushing. We are using all these things under services and when you are pushing to producers, the producer details are available here. And when you're listening as a consumer, as a service, you are consuming some set of data on on payment, do some set of things. So that those logics are defined in the consumer flow. So this internally, this is a standard, like we are using the repository and services, all the business logics are here. Database connectivity details are on the repositories and additional utilities are used and validations are used actually. This is a standard structure we use if you are going to write your own set of service, you please follow this structure actually so that it's easy to uh, manage actually. So models is like our POJOS, what are the POJOS structures we are using. These things are grouped under models. So this is one of the uh, service structure we are currently using. And if you, existing one, if you want to modify also, so this, the structure will be in the same way and you catch later service especially, those logics will be in the services. So Guru, you are there. Yes, uh, Pradeep. Guru is joining. Guru is in. Guru. Uh, no, I don't see Guru on the call. Okay. Mm -hmm. Abhishek, I can you to share uh, with Guru Prasad actually? You can show the UI part actually. Okay. You want me to add him to the group? Yeah, please. Okay, just give me a moment. Abhishek, otherwise I'll share my screen. So I'll continue. Sure. Okay. Similarly, so uh, what we did is now we defined a new UI actually. So uh, as I said, in, a, in our uh, project actually, we have uh, the repo. We have a front end also. Front end is a uh, uh, on the front end, so the UI, what we are looking right. So this we are able to customize using. Uh, uh, we can able to customize. So there is something called 
micro UI, micro UI internal. These are the two things they defined actually. So this is internals. We are not going to modify anything. This is completely the product related things and they provided a hooks to customize each UI. For example, if you have a create property skills, you want to add additionally any uh, extra parameters. What we need to do is uh, uh, we can modify that using the uh, customization folder actually. So that that's what uh, the UI team will do actually using micro UI and micro UI internal. So the customization, they will create a separate folder and they will do here actually. I expected my team member to join here so that uh, he'll explain more actually with the UI. So any additional customization requires, how it supports is we provided a, a customization field also in the UI, in the API level. Example, we have an additional details column actually. So additional details column is a one column where we are saving the data in the JSON format. So in all our Swagger document, for example, property create is there. Additionally, we have a, a field called additional details. Here, customization when we are doing, those details I can save in the additional details column. The same uh, concept we'll use in the UI also, if any new fields are coming, using this additional details, they will push data and they, uh, they will use it actually. See, uh, if you see here, well, recently what we did is uh, we modifying some customization on the trade license module. So he's just in the micro UI, customization folders is created. And inside that he is modifying all this logic. So we are not modifying anything directly on the product is keep adding extra parameters what he wants and is using. So this is also one more thing is uh, some of the fields we are reading from the MDMS also. The MDMS level also I can configure in each field what are the parameters required also we can configure through MDMS. I wish Guru joined more, right? Yeah, I'm just waiting for him. I've pinged him. He should be joining us. So this is the, uh, under micro VI, we created a separate customization folder. And under that, we added our own components actually. The components which are required, these are the different components. So we, we keep adding actually, which are customizable. So they are using the, the hooks are provided so that they are making use of this actually, the fields. And the MDMS also level. Hi, Pradeep. Guru John? Yes, yes. Can you show your UI? Uh, so what are the customizations? Just give an idea how to do that. And uh, we have 10 minutes. Yes, yes, I will share my screen. Can you give me the access for the sharing screen? Yeah, you can sh share your screen. You get an option to share screen, right? Uh, for some reason, I'm trying to promote him to panelists. It's not moving him. Yes, I. Oh, okay. Yes, I can able to share my screen. Yes. Can you able to see my screen? Yes. For customizations, there are mainly two points are there. One is we have to override what is the existing components. Next thing we have to add our new components. Those can be done. By, if it is a new component, we have to add in the field configuration. Suppose property ID. This is a sample format. This is a property ID. 
<clears throat> this we recently added to the this trade license. Previously, it doesn't have anything. We could select, uh, we have created one component also, the root. We are also mentioning, suppose if you click on the property ID, see, if you click on the trade details, then next step is the property ID. It will come. It will come to here, the portion. <clears throat> then it will root to the this one. Trade lessons, they root to the, this component. Here we are mentioning this hide in employee means true means it is a exclusively for the citizen component we have different component for the citizen and the employee why because the citizen ui is different in citizen ui we will do the step-by-step -step procedure in employee UI, we will enter the, all the details at time we will share the details uh, show the details also suppose if it is property is completed the next step is the street i will show it. Here we have to click on apply new trade license. This is the screen. The citizen UI is mobile friendly entirely. Financial UI. You can mention the details. Here are GST number, sample GST number also. Immovable. Immovable means that can't able to move that one. Yes. Shop and select. Commencement date. Operation area. Number of employers. Here we have to select the city. Locality. Skip and continue. It is different. You can use it or not a problem. This also. Here is a trade unit details are coming. You have to select the trade types. Chicken shop I have selected. Next. See, this is the property ID. I showed now previously. The routing is coming from the after unit details. It's coming to property ID. Property. If you enter something property, PT234, like that one. If you click on next, it will go to the street component. This street component. It's street component having a document, uh, door number, all these details. You can enter, you can ignore also. It depends. <clears throat> this is the way. You have to insert new fields. You have to copy this one. You can customize it. So here, uh, so this property trade is a product default functionality we use. On top of that, we added additionally property ID as a one more extra parameter we added for the uh, as a part of the flow. So here validations we can do actually even on like previously we are doing Ajax call those kind of things. We can validate it actually and we'll use it further actually. It's a non-mandatory. This what he did is he just used this in the MDMS. He configured actually. We are just explained the flow from this screen to this screen. Uh, what are the fields we need to show? Everything. All the other things like these are all localization keys we can modify. Here, property ID, UID, what you mentioned. These are all localization things we are using and we paste in this thing. So this way we can customize it actually. Uh, uh, Guru, can you show the folder structure actually? So customization, all these codes we keep in separately in a separate folder actually, in the Git account for client specific. See, can you able to see my VS code? Yeah. This is the product product ID component. We have registered this component. We are using this one. Here we have created this component directly it will come to you if you want to override any component already present <clears throat> suppose i will show one thing trade name is there 
here we are registering the all the components whatever the component we have to register here is the trade name component yeah so we just uh, show the folder structure so how to manage this structure. yes yes folder structure means so <clears throat> you have to create one for customization folders in the more micro ui first of all you have to understand this is the npm library major thing npm files whatever the uh, ui is he <clears throat> government's giving is a version numbers you have to uh, take control of the version numbers they will give the version numbers all the modules all it will uh, have to configure in the versions here package option then whatever you have to do in app.js you have to import that one this basic skeleton is already available nothing to worry you can configure them or suppose if you don't want any m collect model you can disable that one dss we already pgr we, some of the modules we didn't require fsm kind of things we did disable that one suppose dss also just now we have something is not required we can disable here whatever the modules also you can able to here then you have to create our own customization folder and we have created m collect and uh, tl and uh, see whatever the customizations if you want to how many components are you are going to override this components we have to make a list of it thanks uh, abhishek uh, any questions are there because of the no please, there are no questions Thank you, team. Uh, see, uh, Guru. Okay, bro. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pradeep. Thank you, uh, Guru. And thank you all uh, for joining us today. And yes, uh, we can rejoin in the next hour for the next and uh, final session of the Jan 22 uh, digit training. Thank you all and see you soon.